What if the optimal human diet, the one that promotes health, extends lifespan and helps prevent disease, has been right in front of us all along? Today, we're putting aside the endless diet fads and conflicting advice to uncover something profound, something that our evolutionary history and modern science both point to. Imagine a diet that doesn't require you to constantly switch plans or eliminate entire food groups out of fear. Today, I'm diving into why a meat-heavy, flexible diet might be the answer you've been searching for. By the end, you'll see food in a whole new light and it just might change your life. We live in a world overloaded with dietary advice. One day, fat is the enemy. The next, we're told to cut out carbs. Vegan diets are marketed as the healthiest, while paleo diets try to take us back to our ancestors' roots. But which one is right? What if the answer is simpler than you think? Today, I'll share insights grounded in millions of years of human evolution and some of the most compelling scientific research of our time. So stay with me because this evidence may change everything you thought you knew about food and nutrition. Before we dive deep, if you're passionate about health, longevity, and finding a diet that truly works for you, hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notified whenever we uncover more about how food can shape our lives. You won't want to miss these transformative insights. To understand what we should eat, let's start from the beginning. Humans have been shaped by millions of years of evolution, with our survival dependent on one critical factor, the ability to adapt to and thrive on the available foods in our environment. Evolution is a process that refines and perfects species over time, gradually making us more suited to our surroundings. Think of it this way. Certain animals have evolved to eat specific diets. Cows, for example, have complex stomachs designed to digest grass and their bodies are equipped to break down fibrous plant material. But humans? We evolved very differently. Early humans didn't live in an environment of abundance. They had to find ways to survive in challenging conditions where food was often scarce. To do this, they relied heavily on the food sources that provided the most reliable energy and essential nutrients. For early humans, that meant a diet centered around animal foods, specifically large animals that provided a rich source of protein and fat. Over countless generations, our bodies adapted to process these foods efficiently, developing a physiology finely tuned to digest and thrive on animal-based diets. The concept of natural selection meant that the humans who thrived were those who could efficiently process and store energy from the foods available to them. Those who had the physical ability to endure periods of fasting or scarcity and efficiently use animal fats and proteins were the ones who passed down their genes. Over hundreds of thousands, even millions of years, these adaptations accumulated, shaping the human body to function optimally on a meat-centric diet. But evolution is not a short process. It happens over long periods of time, adapting species to slow changes in their environment. So when we look at our food choices today, we're faced with a major dilemma. Our bodies were never designed to consume a diet dominated by processed grains, refined sugars, and vegetable oils. Foods that only entered the human diet recently, within the last few thousand years. The contrast is sharp. Our ancestors thrived on whole nutrient-dense foods, while we're now living in a world of processed nutrient-poor choices. This mismatch has left us facing a rise in chronic diseases, including obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. Imagine the ancient world of our ancestors. There were no supermarkets, no processed foods, no convenient snacks. Instead, they relied on large game animals which provided them with protein, fat, and essential nutrients that were hard to find elsewhere. Meat from these animals wasn't just part of the diet, it was the foundation of it. Their diet was heavy in nutrients from animal sources, and our physiology evolved to support this. In fact, if you look at the archaeological record, there's clear evidence that humans were more than just occasional meat eaters. Studies analyzing the nitrogen isotopic composition of ancient human bones reveal that our ancestors consumed a diet with over 70% of calories derived from animal sources, classifying us as hypercarnivores, similar to apex predators. Think about that for a second. Our ancestors were not filling their plates with grains, legumes or large amounts of fruits and vegetables. They were instead consuming nutrient-dense animal foods in abundance, and their bodies adapted perfectly to this way of eating. This diet provided them with the calories they needed to survive harsh environments and it also helped build the foundation of the bodies we have today. How modern food choices mismatch our evolutionary design. So, how did we end up here? How did a species that evolved to eat a meat-heavy, nutrient-dense diet come to rely on grains, sugars, and highly processed foods? 
The answer lies in two key shifts, the agricultural revolution and the industrial revolution. With agriculture, humans began cultivating grains like wheat and rice, introducing foods that provided calories but lacked the nutrient density of animal foods. And as we moved into the industrial era, the food industry gave us processed foods filled with sugar and vegetable oils. These foods, far from supporting our health, have fueled chronic health issues. Today, processed grains and refined carbs are staples of the modern diet, leading to issues our ancestors never encountered. Then there's the shift in our perception of food quality. Fruits, once available only seasonally and with a much lower sugar content, are now bred for sweetness, providing a constant source of sugar that our ancestors rarely encountered. This year-round abundance is something our bodies are simply not designed to handle. Instead of thriving on these foods, our bodies struggle, leading to metabolic disorders and other health issues. The role of ketosis and metabolic flexibility in human health is truly fascinating. One of the most interesting aspects of our evolutionary diet is our natural ability to enter ketosis. Ketosis is a state where our body uses fat as a primary energy source instead of carbohydrates, producing ketones which are used by the brain and body for fuel. Our ancestors likely entered ketosis during times when food, particularly carbohydrate-rich food, was scarce. Ketosis isn't just a modern fad, it's a natural metabolic state that humans evolved with and used to survive. But while ketosis has many documented benefits, including mental clarity and consistent energy levels, it's essential to consider the full picture. Our bodies weren't in permanent ketosis. Our ancestors had access to small amounts of seasonal plants and occasional carbohydrates. This metabolic flexibility, the ability to switch between using fats and carbs for energy, allowed them to thrive in various environments adapting to the available foods. Why metabolic flexibility may be key to optimal health is something worth exploring. Metabolic flexibility is the ability to efficiently switch between burning fats and carbs as energy sources. It's a survival trait honed over millennia. During colder months or times of scarcity, our ancestors relied on ketosis for energy, turning to animal fats and proteins. When food was more abundant, they ate occasional plant foods, providing carbs temporarily. This cyclical, flexible approach gave them the best of both worlds. Today, this flexibility can allow us to enjoy the benefits of ketosis without committing to it full-time, potentially reducing the risk of nutrient deficiencies or hormonal imbalances that some people experience on long-term ketogenic diets. This approach also aligns perfectly with what our bodies are built for. Instead of constant carb intake, metabolic flexibility allows us to mimic this cyclical way of eating. By maintaining a meat-focused, high-fat diet as the foundation, and only occasionally consuming seasonal plant foods, we're not only respecting our body's design, but we're also setting ourselves up for long-term health and resilience. So what does an ideal, evolution-friendly diet look like today? Start with a foundation of nutrient-dense, fatty animal foods. These foods, rich in bioavailable vitamins, minerals, and healthy fats, should make up at least 70 to 80% of your daily intake. Think of it as fueling your body with the nutrition it truly craves, rather than empty calories. When it comes to plants, think small, think occasional, and think seasonal. You might incorporate a few low-sugar fruits or certain vegetables sparingly, much like our ancestors would have encountered them. This approach ensures that you're maximizing nutrient density while minimizing potential food mismatches. For most people, this kind of diet may seem counterintuitive, but if you consider our evolutionary history, it's clear. A meat-focused diet is what our bodies are built for. By making small tweaks to include only low-toxicity plants on occasion, you're preserving metabolic flexibility while still keeping animal foods as the cornerstone. To sum it all up, an optimal human diet is one that respects our evolutionary design, a meat-centric nutrient-dense approach with metabolic flexibility. By focusing on low-carb, high-fat, protein-rich foods, and only including plant foods occasionally and seasonally, we can align our diet with what our ancestors ate and what our bodies are designed to handle. This return to an ancestral carnivore-adjacent diet could be the key to avoiding the chronic health issues that plague modern society. If you're ready to take control of your health and dive deeper into this journey, hit that subscribe button, like this video, and join the conversation in the comments below. Share your thoughts, questions, and experiences so we can learn from each other and create a community of health-focused individuals. And don't forget to spread the word. Share this video with your friends and family who might benefit from these insights. Let's make this transformation together.